Your final contestant is Jenny Zhen. Tell me about it. Tell me about it, Jenny Zhen. Good evening, fellow leaders of tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, and most honorable judges. How are you all doing today? Now, I know you can't answer me right now, but I'm guessing that your natural response is to say something like, I'm good, or I'm doing well, I'm fine. Thank you so much for asking. How are you doing today? Well, it's actually been a tough few months. I mean, I gained 10 pounds, my homework's overdue, my friends are depressed, my parents are on the verge of divorce, and now I have to give a speech. So, it's a lot of stress, really. But what I find more stressful is knowing that after hearing what I had just said, most people will think that that was just a petty complaint from an immature and ungrateful teenager. Growing up, I had always been a very emotionally sensitive child. I smiled a lot and I laughed a lot, but at the same time, I also cried a lot, which, by the way, drove my mother insane. She was always so frustrated, and she couldn't understand why tears would stream out of my eyes at the smallest of things, and every time she would tell me again and again, stop, stop crying, why do you need to cry? You shouldn't cry. You should be more grateful, and you should take a hold of your emotions. You see, my family, like most of yours, believed that being emotional was a sign of weakness. To them, displaying stress, anger, or sadness equated to being immature or throwing a childish tantrum. And for the longest time, that's what I believed as well. At one point, I grew tired and ashamed of the me that was always anxious and overthinking, of the me that either laughed a little too much or talked a little too much, of the me who's Tears would easily glisten out of my control. And I tried my best to suppress myself, to not tell anyone about my challenges and my feelings, afraid that I would be judged, afraid that I would be childish, and afraid that I was at fault for letting my emotions get the better of me. Eventually, I realized that I wasn't being myself at all. Of course, I cried less, but at the same time, I also smiled less. I laughed less. I was always unenthusiastic and apathetic, indifferent to others in my surroundings. And I wasn't able, I couldn't enjoy life like I had before simply because I told myself that in order to be accepted, I had to bottle away myself along with my problems, my insecurities, and my dear emotions. Today, I have found friends, and I have found a safe space where I can express myself freely without fear. But I know that there are so many people out there, among the audience today, who feel the need to hide a part of themselves away, who shoulder so much burden, but can't express it, cannot tell anyone, cannot speak a word. A teacher once told me that the difference between a student leader and everyone else was that when they asked you, how are you? They mean it with all their heart. And they're willing to listen to what you have to say and to help you in any way they can, which is a beautiful statement, really, but I disagree. Because I believe that no matter your age, your gender, your ethnicity, whether you're a leader or not, a student or not, the least you can do to help your community to change this situation is to be open to being vulnerable is to reach out, to listen, and to say that it's not weak to cry. It's not ungrateful to be upset, and it's not immature to be emotional. Fellow leaders of tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, and most honorable judges, how are you doing today? How are you feeling? Please, tell me about it.